Hello, this is Mark Eloff, movie columnist for The Dagger, with a review of The Dictator. In one sense, Sasha Baron Cohen returns to his roots of extremely offensive comedy. On the other hand, he abandons the format of his previous candid reaction films and replaces it with a structured story. Unfortunately, this structure sets up the jokes way before the punchline, removing much of the desired effect. The film is the heroic story of a North African dictator, Aladdin, who risked his life to ensure that democracy would never come to the country he so lovingly oppressed. At worst, this is a film in search of itself. As ill-defined and shallow as the character Aladdin comes off, Cohen manages to wrangle comedy out of him. The deadpan banter between Cohen and his comedian co-stars is on point most of the time. Baltimore's own Anna Ferris, playing Zoe, the unshaven owner of a food co-op, is the subject of most of the best singers. Things fall apart in the in-between scenes when the actual story needs to be told. Playing out more like dinner theater than a Hollywood film, the parts never feel cohesive or even coherent. The stereotypes, especially the Arabic, are broad brushed to a degree it seems that Cohen went out of his way not to be too offensive. Not that it didn't offend Arabs, who decry Cohen's brown face routine. While it is certainly more offensive than Ashton Kutcher's Pop Chips brown face routine, to some degree the criticism is appropriate. However, the same people offended by that routine seem to be perfectly okay with the other stereotypes women, other African minority groups, left wing radicals that Cohen uses in the film. The larger point here is that by the end of the film, the stereotypes being decried are turned on their head and pointed directly at the average American. While it is a bit preachy, the film concludes with a tongue-in-cheek comparison of the traits of a dictator and the plight of the average American in the current economic crisis. So what is more offensive, the grossly disproportionate stereotypes of a comedian known to push that envelope, or the average American who now finds himself in economic bondage due to the actions and decisions of a slick few? If you have any knowledge of Cohen's work, you know what you were getting into before you purchased your ticket. This is not the best of his character-based films, and in many ways is a step back from his roles in Sweeney Todd and Hugo. On the other hand, as he is now well known, it may be impossible for him to reverse course and truly play candid roles. Let's hope in the future that he shoots for the more highbrow roles, or at least hires a better writer. The Dictator receives two stars out of four, and is rated R for strong crude and sexual content, brief male nudity, language, and some violent images. For my full review, and to share your thoughts on the movie, log on to The Dagger at www.daggerpress.com, Harford County's best source for news and comment with an edge.